In the last video, we looked at Turn 1, also known as Casemate 1, at the Battery Toad Strong Point, which is now a museum. In this video, we take a look at Terms 2 and 3. There's not much to see in both terms, as Term 2 is now a back sanctuary and sealed off from the public. And Term 3 had an unfortunate accident just after the war and is now completely destroyed. So let's take a look at Term 3 first. I should have looked at Term 2, but due to the thick woodlands, I got a bit disorientated and missed to Term 3 for Term 2. Right, we're going to go into these woods here. As you can see, we've come across this one. I think this is Term 2. It's been completely destroyed. If this is it, it looks like it is anyway. And we've got uh, Term 3 and Term 4, or Casemates 2, 3 and 4. Uh, term 1, or Casemate 1, was the uh, organisation Tud battery we've been in already. So let's have a look at these. Listen, this, this one's completely destroyed. It has been completely destroyed, this has. So how, much, how much firepower it's gonna, must have taken to destroy this thing like it has. I'm really surprised, really. Let's be next. As you can see, there's not much left of Term 3 now. The roof's completely missing. You can see that this casemate had an anti-aircraft gun position on top of it. But that's about all that's left of the roof. Rumour has it that two Frenchmen entered the gun emplacement in late 1945, probably carrying out some kind of urbex and or just looking at something to salvage. As in the early 1940s, the local people weren't allowed anywhere near this strong point when the Germans were manning it. Apparently one of these men had an open flame or candle and went into the stored ammunition area where the explosive cordite would have been stored. The cordite probably ignited and blew the rear of the casemate up, killing both men. This first picture is apparently the rear of Term 3, which has very little damage to it. This picture is the front of Term 3, with its gun and roof still intact. There is, however, a large crack to the upper right hand side. So I'm assuming that if these pictures are of Term 3, then the reason that there's no roof left on the casemate is possibly due to the Allies destroying it themselves, for safety reasons, once the gun had been removed. So let's move on and take a look at Casemate 2. A lot of this area seems to be sealed off for whatever reason it is. I'm assuming it's because of safety more than out else. That gate's locked. We're in the second forest now and um, there's quite a lot of um, buildings here. They're definitely to support the, uh, these batteries. These guns. Right, I think I'm at Case Mate 3 coming along. This is absolutely huge. Just as big as, um, well, they are with the size of the guns. This actually feels bigger than um, Battery Tud. We can see the sign there or not, if I zoom in. Yeah, there you go. It's a, a battery, sorry, a bat sanctuary. Well, this casemate looks a heck of a lot bigger than the uh, one at uh, the Toad Battery. It's huge. Let's see if we can have a look inside. Well, you can see it's caged off anywhere. Ah, steps. Lovely. Wow, this is just so big. And you see that part there, which is the canopy. Um, 
Apparently something happened in 1944, 45, when the Canadians took over. I'm not sure what the heck happened, unless they were taking the gun out and they blew the top off. But anyway, that's all gone. In the next video we take a closer look at Term 4 or Casemate 4. This casemate's abandoned but there's quite a few things to have a look at inside. Thanks for watching.